Clay Albers and I have had a guide-client relationship now for over a decade, and it all really got started, or the catalyst behind it all, was his son made the initial contact with me because his son was interested in becoming a professional redfish tour angler and wanted to come fishing with me, and his dad had been watching Flats class for a couple of years, and as soon as I met both of them, both Spencer and Clay, we had an instant connection, especially Clay and I, because Clay and I are kind of from the same era. Uh, we have similar backgrounds and uh, enjoy some of the same things outside of fishing. So it just, it, it was an instant friendship. I'm from Mandeville, Louisiana, which is just north of New Orleans. And I spent my youth fishing the marshes of Louisiana. I'm very familiar with red fishing and speckled trout, flounder, and most of the inshore species that most people are familiar with. All right, Clay, we've got a low water situation here. So uh, a lot of these small juvenile or micro poons have worked their way to the outside this morning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the poons up here in the slick, close to the bank in about a foot and a half, two foot of water. But there's also gonna be the opportunity to catch redfish, snook, trout, and whatnot. Now when the tide flattens out and starts going back the other way, then we'll move back into the creek. All right. So the goal is we'll stay on the outside, just outside of these mosquito creeks and little back lagoons. And then as the water comes in a little bit later, we're gonna work our way right back into the back country. That's the plan today. What areas do you think we may see more of the tarpon than the reds? For the I think we'll see most of the tarpon when the tide comes up, but we're gonna see up. a few this morning. I think we'll see the reds this morning on the outside because the lagoons, okay. um, according to Captain Cody Pierce, they've not been full of redfish or snooks. So our opportunity to get a redfish or a snook is gonna be this morning. Right our chance to get the poons will probably be in the afternoon, but you never know. I spend a lot of time on the lower tide phases focusing on redfish. And I have some interesting tactics that I like to use for summertime redfish. First of all, we're typically dealing with some really terrible weather. It's always humid, hot, you've got thunderstorms, you've got all these things that are always just making summertime such a challenge. But those low tides that you, you get in the mornings with that tide rushing out, those fish, when they get into some of those places where it had been raining and the water chilled off, they tail. I mean, just aggressively tail. And you'd be surprised some of the ways that you catch these fish. Naturally, you're thinking a jerk shad, anything weedless in the soft bait category is going to work. But believe you me, I'm telling you right now, if you guys try a topwater plug on tailing redfish, you're gonna catch them. There you go. Got him. That's what I wanted right there, my friend. Got him. Whoa. That was pretty graceful. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. It's not as big as the ones you're used to catching, but it's a good one. And it's on top water. <laughs> Gotta love it when it's on top water. These guys don't have the menu yeah. of fish having Louisiana. They don't have your, you guys are on a high caloric diet there yeah. in Louisiana, but I'm telling you, I watched him, he fat, absolutely ate the whole plug. Yeah, that's a good deal. Look at him. Good one. Watch him over. I got him. Yeah, he's pretty respectable. <laughs> you did eat a top water. He's almost tail like, him. Oh yeah. Cause I got a, I got a grip. Nice. <laughs> Do it like a Louisiana boy. I don't know, man. He's looking a lot like he's a cousin of the Louisiana fish. Yeah.
we've been looking for the micropoons, just kind of, you know, they're kind of rabbiting down, just lazily going along the mangrove shoreline here. And then we were pushing so many of these fish out from underneath the hole. I was like, I'm just gonna throw a top water and see if I can wake one. It was gonna happen sooner or later. That one wanted it. Yeah, he now, nailed it. We have to take care of our fish here, so we don't have as many as you. So when you put them in the water, grab a hold of his tail and let Can't him swim we? out of your hand. I'll take care of that. <laughs> Really, the strategy behind what we're trying to do today is on this flat out here, since I'm push pulling and I'm at the back of the boat and I'm giving you an 18 foot advantage, I need to have a heavier bait that I can make long casts. Yeah. So most of the zones that I'm casting in are from 11 o'clock back around the clock south and from basically two o'clock or one o'clock down south and I'm letting you have the front of the boat and you're throwing that jerk shad, which right. works extremely well on spinning gear because it's, for the most part, almost unweighted with that chin locks and allows you to move through all this grass. Where my bait sits on top, I'm, I'm able just to walk the bait around. And even if I don't catch anything, it will lift the fish and push them away and I'll know they're there. So it's almost like it's a bird dog bait for me. And occasionally I catch one and that's definitely a catch bait. And you think it's a good strategy that I'm using this bait. I'm working at a little bit different depth than you. From, and I'm Subsurface. watching as these schools move. And I'm working around your bait too. So it kind of gives well, us an advantage. You can pick up the hot fish when I get one all fired up and he doesn't want to eat it. You what? can throw him behind me and steal him. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm, just, I'm watching <laughs> you. I know you got You're picking up my trash. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that really got me interested in fishing with CA was he's a good teacher. Um, he's a student of his profession. And he's really good at uh, articulating information, speaking well, and helping anglers out with information um, that's really valuable, or you might say invaluable, to help them enjoy fishing. Real, 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 real. You got him, dog. Nice. I read. You come to Florida to catch silver. Why do you keep catching copper? I don't get it. You know, CA, really? <laughs> you invite me down to your home, 12 hour drive to catch fish that are in my backyard. <laughs> Coming to I'm help. looking at this tan in water. It's one of the guys that I'm used to. A good one at that, huh? I'll let you give I'll me a tell you what, they're pretty, they're pretty close to the color of your fish, too. Oh, these look like twins. Oh, yeah. I think these guys have been... We're not going home today until you catch some silver. Look at the color. Yep. That dude's got to be full of crustaceans and have to get color like that on him. Beautiful fish. Beautiful. Look at him. Absolutely that is pretty gorgeous. Red. Yeah. Awesome. That's like an average size we'll see in the ponds in Louisiana. That's yeah. a pond fish, I call it. Yeah. Healthy. Look at him. Yeah. So they eat jerk sheds and they eat... Top waters. Top waters. I bet they eat poor boys too down here. <laughs> <laughs> and the redfish in Louisiana are really, they're getting hard to catch now because of pressure, but they really aren't hard to catch. I mean, you can literally slip in with a pole and skiff, or, uh, quietly move up to them and, and, and make a rod length cast to them. And actually, they'll give you six or seven shots if you mess it up. So I thought I was a pretty accomplished red fisherman until I showed up here and got on a boat with CA about 10 years ago. First thing is I couldn't see them. Um, if you raise your rod, they run. Our fish don't do that. So that takes time, patience, and practice to get good at that, you know, at the red fishing sport in Florida. But I'm getting better. 10 years later, I can catch a few. There he goes. Hooked up. I'm out of your way. I'll need a hand with this gentleman. Yeah, I know you won't. We don't want to lose this guy. He's a quality fish. I'm getting a little old for running around on this boat. Nice thing about this guy, he won't leap like those silver things. <laughs> Keep him in the water. 
thought you wanted to catch stuff that was from Louis, not from Louisiana. You wanted snook and tarpon. What do you keep catching redfish? Ah, oh, it's in my blood. Born and raised on these guys. Can't get tired of it. Yeah. Never get tired of it. This is a health, a healthy fish. Yeah, it is. He's heavy. Man, what an eat too, buddy. Yeah. Is that that jerk shad kind of swims up high? And it was right there where you could get it. Yeah, this is going to be this is a, way over the slot. Oh, no. This, this is a, a, <laughs> this is a this this is like the ones we get in Venice. That's right, Louis, man. Venice, this is Louisiana. a locomotive fire engine, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy cow. He's lean, too. You going to grab him? I'm going to grab him. All right. Bail's off. Free. Dude. Now that... <laughs> That's like a Louisiana red right there. We got to get a Louisiana guy down here to catch a Louisiana <laughs> red sea. Eh? Wow. I'll let you take your Beautiful. hook out of them. All right. That is gorgeous. In between fishing for the redfish before we tried to move into and we got into some of those mosquito ditch canals and into some of those little lagoons to catch the micropoons, there were some really bad thunderstorms. And you feel relatively safe in the confines of those mosquito canals with all the mangroves and the Australian pines and everything like that. But I'm going to tell you, everyone was flinching and we were looking for a place to get out of the weather. Unfortunately, we waited too long. I, I'll bet we took 50 gallons of fresh water on in the rainstorm um, between catching our redfish and actually being able to move into the ponds to try to catch those, those little poons. We lost like three and a half hours, honestly, three and a half hours. What should have had this idea like? Yeah. Why, an hour and a half. Why do we stay out there? <laughs> you know, and yeah, listen, this is what we've been contending with. It's been incredible. Oh, there's some good ones rolling up there. Some real good ones. Ooh, look at them. Might do a bow and arrow cast in here, honestly. Yeah. Might have to. Here, I'll show you another yeah. cast once we get up here that I'll... It's going to be way easier than trying to cast like that, because that's going to be a tough cast. So, I got a cast for you. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, we are hooked up. Teach, I got it. <laughs> or you can cast the way you want to. Now these guys are fun. <laughs> Whoa! Nice job. We want to keep them in the water, not in the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Even though the trees are only three or four feet off the deck. You got him? Yeah. I think he's already done. <laughs> Bail's open, go. All right, buddy, I'm trying to take care of you. Trying to take care of you. Just like when they're big, they don't like it either. Look at that. I'll let you roll the hook out. Yep. Oh. I don't want to put it in my hand. Oh, when he's off. And he took care of it for us. Took care of it for us. Quick release. That I nice. enjoyed. Nicely done. That's my first juvie. So the, That's my first so, juvie. All of them. So big. right in here, the way you you'll have some room to cast, but when we start getting in these tight spots, I'll show you. Something. Show me a trick. I'll show you a trick. Just instead of trying to cast to the side, you're going to have it about even with the 
reel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that way you can just pitch it like that. See how you do that? Yeah. Just it's just a very, very short rod movement. Do it once more and watch it. You basically just when you let it go, just let it load. But don't sling it up. No, it's just. Best. And All you right. can just toss straight down the canal that way, and you'll be able to get them. Yeah. Let me put. Let me tie another one of these on. That one there tore it up pretty good. Okay. So you hold that for a second. Let me clip this off. And basically all this is, is a little zinkers that I cut down with a pair of scissors. So this is typically a five inch long bass bait. Um, Ned rig style, if you will. I put it on 3 16 jig head so it could use a little heavier action rod. And I've got another one already pre-rigged up for you. So I'm gonna put that one on next. So when I set this trip up with Clay, that's one thing. The second part of the setup was actually talking to the camera boat captain because we were fishing his body of water, the zone that he has all the expertise in. So I talked with Cody and we we're talking a little bit about what kind of gear we're gonna need for this trip. He's like, I would bring mostly medium heavy gear. So I brought medium heavy and I brought heavy gear to be able to fish for tarpon and snook primarily, knowing that we'd catch some redfish and trout. I was like, ah, we can do that on medium heavy gear. I don't need to bring anything lighter. Boy, that really painted me into a corner. But what bailed me out was this little Terramar PX. This is a seven foot medium heavy action rod. So it's about an 80-20 rod. 80% 80 is, is pretty good power and backbone. And the last 20% is a little bit of tip that would allow me to throw little four inch white jerk shads. This is the Z-Man four inch scented jerk shads. If I didn't have this one weapon on the boat for, for Clay and I to catch redfish and stuff with, I think I would have been in a lot of trouble because all the other stuff was much too stiff to be able to make little small baits have a ton of action. This is a cool little setup. Not only is the Terramar PX the perfect little rod for this, but I, I put on so I'd have some silk, silky smooth drag. This is the, the Twin Power 4000 XD, which is a really nice reel. Got a big power knob here. Helps me a great deal with 15 pound braid to know that we can catch 20 and 30 pound tarpon. Now we never caught those 20 and 30 pound tarpon. We didn't even get to tangle with a snook. Um, but it did make everything turn out just about the way I needed it to. I connected about 40 inches of 40 pound fluorocarbon. That's what we were throwing to both the reds and the micro poons. Um, I've got that connected to a four aught one eighth ounce chin locks hook. And then again, the star of the show had to be the white four inch scented jerk shads. Just an excellent bait all around to catch everything you want in both Pine Island Sound and quite honestly, Charlotte Harbor in general. So if you take an outfit like this with you the next time you visit that zone, I think you're gonna find out. You'll be prepared to catch about anything that swims in front of the skiff. With the larger talk I'm more experienced with, I had no idea I was gonna be catching juveniles and I call peanuts compared to the fish that CA and I have caught over the years. You know, it was really interesting to, uh, to experience that. And it was uh, intriguing how similar they act like the adult tarpon. And they do all the acrobatics and they, they do their turns and dives and like, you know, you're accustomed to, but they don't beat you up. And uh, I can tell you right now, uh, as I get older, I'm starting to appreciate smaller tarpon. I really think I'm not ready to take on too many more 200 pounders, although I wouldn't mind getting one. Micro poon. They're a lot of fun. They are. They are a lot of fun. Because I'd love to try this on a fly rod. I wish we would have brought one, but we started out there on the beach this morning thinking we were going to be catching yeah. their larger cousins. Right. And we ended up having to tuck in here because of all the bad weather. Wow. Which looks like it's about over. 
It's still a tarpon. It's, it's just still, a one that's, thirty-seventh <laughs> size of an actual tarpon. Yeah, these don't hurt. <laughs> yeah, think of it that way. They don't hurt. There won't be any pain. Look at that. Boy, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank our camera crew. Uh, Jake and Laszlo did such a fantastic job enduring a 13 hour day and the, the gear getting wet and trying to make this thing happen. And the same thing goes really for Captain Cody Pierce as our camera boat guide. He was, he was not amazing by being able to pull that long with us and make sure we got this episode done, but his knowledge and experience in that area, um, you can't ever, ever replace local knowledge and he was fantastic that way. And, and Clay Albers, uh, I, I know I don't have to thank you because you love doing this stuff, but I'm gonna thank you anyway. You were, a gr you were a great guest host in this. I think a lot of people are gonna love your personality as it shines through in this show because you are never negative. No matter how hard it got, you pushed through and you did it with a smile on your face the whole time. <laughs>